another thing that I think COVID is, it's caused a lot of loneliness. And so all of this will be from second Timothy chapter four, um, loneliness. Uh, don't think loneliness is, is a strange thing. It's part of the human existence. It's coming sooner or later, rich, the poor, the popular, and watch this. If you're born again, it will knock on your door. Um, Janis Joplin was a famous singer, um, and she was around big crowds. But after a concert, she went into her apartment in L.A., and she overdosed. And her last words to her friend was, after being on a big stage with a crowd, I come home to loneliness. So if you're popular, if you're famous, if you're born again, here's somebody that was a godly man. Job chapter 19, verse 13 and 14. Job 19, verse 13 and 14. Job had a close walk with God. And this is what he said. My brethren are far from me. You could hear him being lonely right there. My familiar friends have forgotten me. So Job felt the pain of loneliness. King David felt it, and he was a man of God. In Psalms 102, verse 6 and 7, Psalms 102, verse 6 and 7, he says, I'm like a bird alone in the desert. That's King David. And so... This really, this loneliness started in the fall when Adam and Eve fell. Remember that? That's before that, they didn't feel, they never experienced loneliness before the fall or guilt or shame. But now since the fall of man, they're feeling guilt, fear. They feel remorse. They feel, they have feelings of rejection. And this was all passed down to everyone. Everyone has those feelings sometimes of nobody likes me, um, I'm alone. All of those feelings that we have that are negative, it started in the fall of man. And so if you're in church again, when you're born again, those feelings still come to us. If you're married, divorced, single, young, old, brilliant, uh, welcome to the human race. Um, Elijah was a prophet. He could call fire down from heaven. One time he went to pray and it, he, it ended a drought. Yet he would get discouraged, hungry, tired, upset, scared, lonely. In fact, one time he said, I'm the only one serving God. So all of those things are just natural. And I think the devil tries to make us feel like we're the only ones that have these feelings. That's a trick of the devil. Um, James 5 and 17 says, James 5 and 17, Elijah was a human being with a nature like us. He had passions like us. This guy that called down fire had all of these feelings. And so some people, they try to avoid loneliness with alcohol or drugs, or they become workaholics, or they buy the mall out. I won't say what gender that does that. Or relationship to relationship. There's Hollywood for you. Or they move from state to state um, or from job to job. They're, they're trying to fill that, that void, that space. And Apostle Paul had all the reasons to be lonely. Uh, he's in solitary confinement. He's in an inner cell in second Timothy chapter four, and he's near death. He's, they say people that are in the hospital and they know they're getting ready to die and everybody goes home. They said, that's the loneliest feeling in, in the world. And um, that's why I remember my dad in the hospital, the last days, I just slept on the floor in the hospital because I knew I didn't want him to be alone. So second Timothy four and six, Paul is near death, and this is what he says in 2 Timothy 4 and 6, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I am now ready. That's, he's saying, I'm near death now. 
And to be offered that phrase right there is an Old Testament. He was referring to how they would offer animal sacrifices. And so he says, they're getting ready to execute me. And so here's some uh, five or six ways Paul dealt, dealt with his loneliness in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, number one, he had a clear conscience. And this is going to be in verse 7. He's on his deathbed, and he has a clear conscience. Watch what he says. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Three things right there. Fought, finished, and kept. And this helped him to have a clear conscience when he was lonely. I have fought a good fight. You know, some fights are not, they're bad fights. And, and those are, that will be a heaviness on your conscience when you're lonely. That just adds to the pot. And he says, I finished my course. What he was saying is, everything has been completed spiritually. I'm lonely, but my conscience is clear. I kept the faith. I have a clear conscience. So Paul's by himself, and he's reflecting. Even in his loneliness, he's saying, but I have a clear conscience. That helps out right there. In fact, you know, there's even a scripture where Paul was being falsely accused in Acts 23 and 1. Acts 23 and 1. And he told the Sanhedrin court, that would be like the Supreme Court. Even though people was falsely accusing him, he says, but I have a clear conscience. That goes a long way when the heat's on or when you're lonely. You have a clear conscience. Here's the second thing what Paul had in his loneliness. Apostle Paul, he had salvation. He had salvation. If I had to choose one thing to have all my life and I, everything had to go, it would be my ticket to heaven. It would be salvation. And you're, here he is. He's on his deathbed. And, you know, some people, they're on their deathbed and they're not sure what's going to happen next. It's like you pass those chocolates around and you're not sure if it has an almond in it or a jelly and you can't poke on it because everybody's watching you. So you just take a chance. So here's Paul. He's, he knows for sure where he's at spiritually. He has salvation. Write down this scripture, 2 Timothy 4 and 8. 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Watch what he says. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I like that right there. Paul had heaven on his mind, on his deathbed. And he said, there's a crown. This crown they gave to athletes at the end of the race. And, and so um, he was looking at that. He says, I'm crossing the finish line in this race. And I'm waiting. When I get on the other side, there's a crown waiting for me. And he says this, a crown of righteousness. Righteousness means doing right, living right, and being born again. And so um, I was in the kitchen, and my dad was on that hospice bed. And the first convert that he baptized in 1955 in Merced called. I answered the phone, and my dad was laying there on that hospice bed. And I said, Dad, your first convert wants to talk to you, Benny Cortivo. And so I heard the conversation and my dad said, don't cry for me. I've got all my ducks in order. Here he is on his deathbed and he knew he had salvation. He was comfortable with it. He was sure. Paul said, for me to die is gain. And when you're lonely, that's a good thing to have in your backpack pocket. A clear conscience, salvation. He's in a prison alone. And we all feel that. We have those feelings sometimes. And they say that Paul was about 65 years old when in 2 Timothy 4. And he has served God for 30 years now. He's been born again. And he says, I kept the faith. So there's two things Paul had. Here's another thing. In his loneliness, uh, he was seeking fellowship. He was seeking fellowship. Watch what verse 9 says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. Do thy diligent to come shortly unto me, 
only Luke is with me and bring Mark. Watch what he says. He says, come shortly. That means hurry up. I'm on my deathbed. Death is right around the corner. I want you to hurry up and get here. And 2 Timothy 4 is his goodbye letter. It's his last letter. And he's naming all these friends. He, 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 there's three close friends here. He calls out Timothy and Luke and Mark. And he says, you guys need to get here. He doesn't, he's lonely. So he calls friends, fellowship. And Apostle Paul, he's, he's naming all of these people. He names 17 in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 17 friends. Two of them had backslidden. Demas has forsaken me for the world. So he's gone. And then he says, there's Alexander. He's going through all these names. He's, he's a defector. He's Alexander the coppersmith has done me much evil. So he doesn't call on them, but Paul is lonely. Watch what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. Everyone has left me. Have you ever felt that before? We all have because we're human. Timothy has, has left me. Everyone has left me. Verse 16 says, when I was in court, I was alone. There's two scriptures right there how he's feeling. I'm alone. I'm, I'm by myself. And so in crisis, you do feel, you, you really find out who your real loyal friends are. There's two there that was disloyal. But Paul has lots of friends and he's seeking them out. In fact, in Roman, in the book of Romans, he names 35 friends by name, by name. That guy was, he must have been a people's person. But in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he's naming 17 of them while he's lonely, and he's thinking about them. And Paul, here's the thing. Paul is reaching out to friends. He says, come to me. He is the one that's making the phone call. He got a cell phone out and he started making the phone call. Because I think this, sometimes people don't really know we're lonely or we're hurting or what's going on in our mind. It's an inward thing. And I would say, you have to make the phone call. So Paul is reaching out. He's saying, come to me. So that's the, the next thing that he did is he didn't isolate himself. He read because that's a bad thing to do when you're feeling lonely. That's three of them. So here's the fourth one that Paul did while he was lonely is Paul is he took care of himself. And sometimes in disasters, in hurts, in betrayal, in loneliness, people stop taking care of themselves. They lose mo that mo motivation. And so Paul, in verse 13, 2 Timothy 4 and 13, Paul took care of himself. He says, the cloak that I left, bring it, bring it with you when you get here to print where I'm at locked up. Bring that cloak with me. That cloak was a heavy wool garment. And Paul was, he knew wintertime was coming. And he says, in fact, in verse 21, watch what he says. Do your best to come before winter. I want you to bring that jacket with you. He's going to take care of himself. Get my jacket. So uh, that's the next one. Number four is in your loneliness, in your hurts, in your all those feelings that happens. Uh, make sure you keep taking care of yourself. Because if you don't, you're just compounding the problem. Here's the fifth thing. Paul did while he's in, in that prison, in his loneliness. Stay busy. Stay busy. I picked up a, a senior magazine. It wasn't mine. It was my mom's when I was taking care of her. Now I get that magazine. And I remember this doctor in the magazine. He said that um, now doctors, if you feel down, they got a shot or some kind of medicine ready for you because it's about money. But this doctor says, he was an old time doctor. He said, when people came to my office and they were feeling lonely or depressed, he said, 
I didn't give them any kind of medication. I told them, go on a hike, do something you've never done before. Go fly a kite, <laughs> go biking. The worst thing you could do, this doctor said, is sit down and start thinking about your loneliness. That will compound the problem. Every time loneliness comes, go on a walk, go to the mall, do some, go somewhere where there's lights. Paul said this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. When thou comest, bring thou with me, with thee, and the books, plural, but especially the parsnips. And so he said, bring the books. I got to keep my mind busy because idleness will, look, will add to your loneliness. And so, and I, I think in loneliness, people start thinking wrong, if you know what I mean. I noticed that in the Bible. I, I just found this scripture the other day. King David's in a cave. He's lonely and he started thinking wrong. Write down this, Psalms 142 and verse 4. Psalms 142 and verse 4. No one cares for me. See his thinking? He's alone. When you're alone and you don't reach out, that kind of thinking starts happening. No one cares for me. No one takes notice of me. That's what, that's what uh, David was saying. And so when he, I think when emotions are real high or real low, that's the best time not to make a decision in life. That's when it's just ride that thing out. When people that are in prison, they're there because their emotions were on a real low and they made a de decision and it was the wrong decision. And so uh, when Job lost his family, uh, he started thinking wrong. Even Job, he started thinking wrong. He said stuff like this. Why was I born? Uh, where is God? Uh, I want to die. Uh, why am I alive? Why, why there's no more hope? He even used that word. There's no more hope. That's what Job said. He was thinking wrong. Uh, but his faith got him through. He said this. He says, though he slay me, Yet I will, here's the word, trust him. Trust doesn't have to figure out the situation. It just says God's in control. Though he slay me, though I'm lonely, though I don't know why, I will trust him. Job 13 and 15. Job 13 and 15. So Apostle Paul, he stayed busy. Um, some of you might know Annie Frank. She was alone in an attic during the Second War hiding from the Nazis, and the way she survived in that attic all by herself and her family's gone, she started writing a diary, and she got through that, that terrible time alone. She felt, she felt like she wasn't alone because of that. I found my dad's Navy diary. I didn't know he had it until he passed away. I cleaned out his office, and he was right. He, I'm so glad he had that thing. He was alone on a ship during the war, 10,000 miles away from his family. And he wrote every day he was writing what was going on on that ship. And so he kept his mind busy in that loneliness. Paul was alone and he says, bring my books, plural. But watch this. He said, especially the parsnips, especially the Bible. Did you get that? Especially bring my Bible because the word of God cleanses. It really does. You start reading that and you start feeling clean. It, it refreshes. Let me give you a scripture for that. John 15 and 3. John 15 and 3. You are cleansed through the word. The word of God refreshes you. John 15 and 3. The word of God brings joy. If you really get into it and you start thinking about what you're reading, it brings joy to you. Jeremiah 15 and 16. Jeremiah 15 and 16. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. All that other stuff we read is man-made. The Bible is the only thing that is inspired, that is not inspired by man. I always say that. That's my favorite word right there. So Apostle Paul, he's feeding him, himself on heavenly things, 
not the news, all that stuff will just drag you down more. Um, there's either heavenly discussions when we talk or there's earthly discussions. And when we're lonely, those earthly discussions will really drag you down. And I, I was just looking at Luke 24, and you could see both of those discussions in Luke 24. There's earthly discussions and there's heavenly discussions. And you can see how the people that were involved in the earthly discussions, how their spirits went downhill. But the ones that had heavenly discussions, the Bible, they were, they were leaping for joy. In fact, there was two disciples. They were walking on a road in Luke 24, and their discussions were earthly. They were saying, Jesus died. Uh, it's all over with. We were hoping he was the one. And that was earthly discussions, and that was getting them. They were feeling more lonely, more depressed. But there was other, there was others that found the, the grave, and it was empty. And they, here's the key word, they remembered the word. They remembered the Bible. And they remembered Jesus says, I'm going to be down in the grave, and in three days, I'm going to, I'll be gone. They went to the grave. The grave was empty, but their discussions were heavenly, and they started talking like this. Peter ran to the grave. See the joy? He ran, and he was amazed because they remembered the word. So the word refreshes you. It picks you up. All that other stuff will just add to the loneliness. Here's number six. Here's the sixth thing that how he got through loneliness and loneliness will hit everybody that is born sooner or later. And this is the way Paul got through it. He remembered, and this is the last one, remember that God is with you, even if you don't feel like he's with you, because feelings could deceive you. And, you know, every time in the Bible where somebody was lonely, God showed up. That's amazing right there. In fact, in 2 Timothy 4, verse 16 and 17, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, this is what Paul said. When I was in court, no one stood with me. In other words, I was alone. I was feeling lonely. But watch what he says. But the Lord was with me. There's nothing like the presence of God. When Joseph was alone, when he was falsely accused, he was away from his family for 22 years. He didn't see his family. He says twice in Genesis 30, 39, but the Lord was with me. You'll see that twice. But the Lord, I was alone, but the Lord was with me. When Job lost everything, his family, God showed up in a whirlwind. Job 38 and 1. Job 38 and 1. When Moses was alone on the backside of that mountain, God showed up in a burning bush. Here's the last scripture, then I'll stop. Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. I will never leave you or forsake you. And we could, we could go by our feelings and emotions and say, I don't feel God. Or we could go by the written word, which is superior to our feelings. I will never leave you or forsake you. So this is what Paul did in his loneliness. He had a clear conscience. He had salvation. He was born again of the water and the spirit. He, he, he was seeking friends. He was reaching out for friends. He took care of himself. He stayed busy. And he re remembered that God was with him. Those things right there.